Hi everyone, welcome to KTU Web. In this video, we are going to discuss about a different failure modes that oftenly occur with the riveted joints. So before designing a riveted joint, one should be aware about what are the possible ways that uh, failure may occur within the riveted joint. So out of these uh, different uh, failures occur in a uh, riveted joint, we can classify failures of rivets into three major categories that are as follows. First one, a tearing of plate and the second shearing of rivet and the last one crushing of plate when you look at this uh, first case that is tearing of plate you could see two plates are uh, riveted by means of rivet that are arranged within a distance pitch p and uh, this rivet is failed due to a crack within the sheet along the row of this rivet even though the rivets are very strong, if the plate fails upon an application of a tensile load P as shown in this figure, this entire joint will fail. So the failure is due to tearing apart of the plate that we used for this joint. It's the first category of failure that we are expecting within a riveted joint. So when you check with the second category, it is classified as shearing of rivet. Here the plate is very strong even though plate not sheared apart or teared apart. Here you could see within this a figure this thing that is the shear occur within the riveted joint. So due to shear off within the shank of that rivet, the joint get failed. Then uh, the third category is uh, quite uh, different. In this case, the failure occurred due to crushing of rivet or sometimes the crushing of plate. So both cases are classified under this category. You could see in this uh, figure, there is no full shear off or there is no complete tear in the plate instead of that it simply crashes when it crash we will lose the tightness of that joint and it may leads to failure of a rivet so these are the three types go for a quick review tearing of plate that is a plate failed and there is no problem with rivet and the second category is shearing of rivet plate is strong but a shearing occurs within the rivet and rivet tear apart into two pieces and the third category is there is no tear no shear but the rivet shank crushes or otherwise the rivet hole crushes due to a tensile load we can derive expressions which can use to determine the strength of these three different uh, failure situation and we will analyze one by one okay let us uh, start with the first thing these kind of failure what we call tearing of plates in this figure there is a uh, two situation where tearing of plates occur the first case you could see tearing begins from the margin towards the gauge line gauge line is a simply line that join along the row of rivet the distance between the extreme end and the gauge line what we marked as m or margin to avoid this kind of failure due to tearing of plates from margin towards the gauge line this kind of failure can be avoided by taking a sufficient amount of margin for any standard riveted joint, uh, we should take margin equal to 1.5 times of diameter of the rivet or diameter of rivet hole. So if you design at a distance m equal to 1.5 d, there is no question of failure from margin towards the row of the rivet. But uh, the second type of rivet failure is very important in this case, that is in the case of tearing of plate. This plate is uh, teared across the rows of rivet. In previous case, it was plate from plate edge towards the gauge line and we can avoid that by simply putting m equal to 1.5 d. But in this case, tearing occurs across the row of that rivet. So we can have 
uh, equation for the strength of these uh, kind of failure situations. So look at this image, uh, two rivets are set apart at a distance P, that is we call the pitch of that rivet and the rivet fail across this row. So here I can have the area under tearing, that is area under tear. So this is the main thing that you should learn before deriving this equation. Look at this unit, which will be the area of tear here. You could see from this point that uh, marked in arrows to up to this point. So this distance that you can easily calculate it from this relation, this is equal to this distance is equal to p minus d where p is the pitch and d is the diameter of a rivet if you take a p minus d you will get uh, this area where tearing occur so i am going to draw this area this represents the cross-sectional area of that particular point and what will be this uh, distance when you calculate these distance is from this point to uh, this point and this distance is what p minus d that is pitch minus diameter and uh, this distance is what simply the thickness of that plate so area under tear when you calculate area of this small piece between these rivets will be equal to p minus d into t remember we are taking the cross-sectional area and uh, suppose a load PT applying on this rivet. That means the load of tear or the load which responsible for the tear PT is applying on this rivet. And uh, we can easily calculate the stress on this rivet. So stress is equal to, as you know, is load by area. Here, the stress means stress corresponding to this tearing failure. So I am going to call this as sigma t. That is the tearing stress that is equal to the load corresponding to tearing. That is a tearing load. We denote it as pt divided by area. So area is given as p minus d into from this expression, we can write the capacity of tear, the capacity or the strength of this tear. Strength means simply how much load that you can bear. So it is equal to the load that we mentioned. It has PT here. So PT is equal to sigma T into P minus D into T. So this is the expression for the capacity of rivet which undergoes tearing of plate. So when you make the capacity according to this governing equation, you could avoid the tearing of plate or otherwise the plate will tear when load reaches this value PT. So here PT is the limiting factor for this particular riveted joint. You should avoid a load higher than PT is what we are going to do while designing this rivet. Now let us discuss the second type of failure what we called the shearing of rivet. In previous case it was the failure of plate which leads to the failure of joint. But in this case instead of plate the rivet shank is failing. Even the rivet plate is so strong, sometimes when you apply a tensile load as shown in this figure, it may lead to shearing of rivet into two pieces. Here shearing occurs within the shank of rivet, that uh, rivet clearly sheared off into two pieces. Now we can derive a governing equation to determine the strength of riveted joint. Let us consider a tensile force P is acting and it is responsible for the shear, the shear load, shear load, that the load responsible for the shearing of rivet. 
and we denote it as p s and here and here we can find the shearing area shearing area i'm going to denote it as a s since it is the shearing area and a s will be equal to so look at this diagram as we discussed in previous case the shearing area is a uh, right here that is within the cross section of that uh, rivet shank and i can draw that area as a clear circle so this will be the shearing area for that rivet when it is cut into two pieces due to a shearing force so this will be the area and uh, you know that the, the diameter of all is d then what will be the area of the circle then that will be pi d square by 4 so we are getting the shearing area a is equal to pi d square by 4 let us consider the stress of shear that is the stress generated while a force is applied upon the shank of that rivet since it is a shear stress we call it as 2s so that is a shear stress which corresponding to the shearing of this rivet let us consider the basic governing equations that is a shear stress 2s is equal to shear load by shear area this is as same as load by area but in the case the load is a shear load what we call it as p s divided by the shear area right here is pi d square by 4 now i can write 2 s is equal to 4 into p s by pi d square so this will be the equation of shear stress when a rivet is subjected to shear loading and as same as in the previous case from this expression we can have the shear capacity or or the shear strength that is p s is equal to from this expression we can write 2 into pi d square by 4 and uh, this is the expression for finding the capacity of rivet which under a shearing load on rivet from this equation you would identify the ps or the shear load capacity is the limiting factor right here when shear in the shank exceeds this particular limit ps the rivet may fail upon shearing on its a shank so when designing we can limit the shear stress within the shank within a limitation what we called ps and there is two types of shear occurred in a riveted joint you can identify that from this picture look at the first image it is a single shear or it's a shear of a lap joint if you are not good at a different types of joint you should check my previous video so as in the case of lap joint there is two sheets or joint by means of a rivet when a shearing occurs within this uh, rivet, you could see that rivet is sheared into two pieces. But in the case of bud joint, when you look at this figure, you could easily understood that that shearing occurs in two surfaces. So double shear occurs right here. So here we have a shear surface. This is shear number one. And the bottom, we have another one that is shear surface two so since the shear area is doubled in this case we can uh, rearrange the equation for the double shear and remember any lab joint is always undergoes a single shear since there is a uh, two sheets joining together but in the case of a double strap or a double cover butt joint it has uh, two shear surfaces because uh, these rivets are basically cut into three pieces as shown in this figure now the equation of shear for a double riveted butt joint will be little differ for double riveted butt joint a rivet with a double shear so for the shearing area will be 
two into what we have in single shear. For for single shear, the shearing area is pi d square by four, and for in the case of double shear, the shearing area will be two into pi d square by four, and hence the capacity P s will be equal to two into two pi d square by four. So this is the equation for a capacity when a rivet join undergoes a double shear. And remember this point: single shear always will be the for lap joints, and a double shear occurs when we use a double cover butt joints. There is one thing to note in the case of double shear. So as uh, theoretically speaking, the double shear is almost. Two times that of the single shear, but as per Indian Boiler Regulation Act, different countries have different regulations. As per the standard for Indian Boiler Regulation Act, for a double shear, for double shear, P S is equal 1.875 times that of single shear. That is two into pi d square by four. So theoretically speaking, we are getting uh, two times, but as per the Indian uh, regulator standard for the boilers, we are using it as 1.875 into what we have for single shear. This is the third category of failure, what we call crushing of rivet of plate. So as uh, seen in this figure, it is neither tearing of plate nor the shearing of a shank of rivet. Instead of that, the failure occur is uh, due to crushing of rivet shank or otherwise the crushing of that rivet hole. This failure is basically due to a bearing load uh, within this hole, and uh, the governing equation can be derived as follows: Since uh, this uh, rivet is under a load P, let us load for uh, Crushing as load for crushing, we denote it as P C, and then crushing press as sigma C. That C stand for crushing. Now sigma C is equal to that is the crushing stress is equal to crushing load by crushing area. Then what will be the crushing area right here? If you look at this figure, crushing happens due to a bearing load upon this uh, joint. So when a load P is applying in this direction, it will act upon the projected area of a diameter. So you have to check the projected area of D. We are going to check what is the projected diameter. So this will be the diameter of hole, what we denote it as a D. When a force is applied in this direction, this will be the projected area, projecting the diameter towards this hole. I'm going to draw the exact uh, cross-sectional area. When you project that diameter, you will get a cross-sectional area just like this. Distance will be D. And as in the previous cases, if you take the cross-sectional area within that particular region, this will be the thickness of that rivet plate. Area of crushing, area of crush, what we call it as AC, is equal to D into T. So D T. Hence, sigma C is equal to crushing load. P C divided by D into thickness T. That gives you the equation for load capacity. Hence, the load capacity or strength P C is equal to sigma C D T. This is the load carrying capacity in the case of crushing of a rivet. So, in this equation. P C is the limiting factor. When you design a rivet joint in such a way that the crushing will not reach P C, that rivet can easily sustain. Now let us consolidate the results. The first one, the tearing of plate, the capacity P T is given by sigma T into P minus D T, and P S given by tau into pi D square by four n. 
PZ is equal to sigma C into DT. So these are the three equations.